Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop. And tonight we're going top shelf with a great guest of voice. You'll probably recognize Will Lyman. Will, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks. How are you, Dan? Just fabulous. Well, if you've got a question for Will or for George and I, put it in the chat room in Facebook or in YouTube or wherever it is you're watching or send up a smoke signal and we'll get to that. And, uh, we're going to have a great time tonight. So stay tuned. Voice over body shop right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products. Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive. From their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS. All righty. Well, we're into 2021 and uh, trying a new system tonight to see if, if this makes things a little bit easier if you were around last week or two weeks ago when it's, things just sort of fell off the face of the earth. It's, you know, but 2021 no. is 2020 with more cowbell. <laughs> we need more cowbell. Yes. <sighs> yes, anyway, but I, I had a fun weekend. I'm not going to get into it too deeply, but... Drink lots of water. Don't get a kidney stone. If Dan becomes more and more unintelligible, you'll know why. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> He's on a few painkillers. No. Yeah. But I am feeling no pain, fortunately. Good. Good. Uh, yeah. So uh, if you've ever had a kidney stone, you know what I'm talking don't. about. If you haven't, don't get one. Yeah. Uh, but we're here to talk about voiceover and uh, all the cool stuff that goes along with that. Now, I'm going to introduce our guest, but you have to understand, I've wanted to get him on for like 10 years. We've been doing this show for 10 years, if you can believe that. Uh, you know, when the word podcast was just like, like, a what? Uh, and and I could actually show you on, on the spreadsheet, I want to get Will Lyman on the show. And George is like, um, okay. And finally, I'm on his website and I'm like, oh, I can just contact him and <laughs> he wrote back so let 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 me introduce him uh let's see here i know it's here somewhere uh okay all right will lyman's an actor a voice actor uh very accomplished at a lot of different things but you would recognize him first depending if you watch pbs a lot uh as the voice you usually hear when you watch frontline this voice that just sort of grabs you and says, I'm going to tell you the truth. But probably more notably so, for those of you watching football games, he was the voice for the Dos Equis, the most interesting man in the world campaign. So let's welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop, Will Lyman. Will, welcome. Thank you very much, Danny. Hey, Will. Yeah. Joining us from Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, so uh, anyway, 
uh, welcome to the show. It's so great to have you on. And uh, I, I have so many questions that I've always wanted to ask. Uh, but first off, what I usually ask people is uh, give us a little background on yourself. I mean, I, you know, I, we know what you do, but how did you get there? Where are you from originally? And, and what led you into doing voiceover work along with your acting? Well, I, I'm originally from Vermont, um, and I, I came to Boston in 1966 um, to go to Boston University School of Fine Arts um, and study theater. And uh, when I eventually got out of there after some hemming and hawing, um, I, I had decided that actually theater was what I wanted to do uh, in my life. and. Uh, um, but as we know, it's not a great way to make a living. And, uh, <laughs> uh, my, my secondary thought was, well, if I'm going to do this, I need an income stream of some sort. Um, and uh, uh, waiting tables is really is too much work. And, uh, <laughs> very strenuous. Uh, so I had, because, you know, people had told me I have a great voice. Uh, I... I figured, well, of course, that's how that's how I'm going to do it. So uh, I I started uh, taking my little tapes around uh, on my little five-inch reels, uh, <laughs> which we were treasured back though in those days. I still uh, got a whole box back here. So. I'm dropping them off in studios and and uh, ad agencies all over Boston. And I was doing uh, you know a, a radio spot every couple of months. Uh, that kind of thing, um, until uh, actually I went away. I went away to to uh, Denver to do the opening season, the inaugural season of the Denver Center Theater for the Arts. We did, uh, um, uh, well, we did uh, 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 Learned Ladies. We did uh, um, Midsummer Night's Dream, and I did uh, Chalk Circle. Um, and when I came back, I got a, fr a call from my, uh, my friend and mentor, Jay Rose, who is, is now, unfortunately, no longer with us, uh, my age, much too young to die. Um, but, uh, he called and said, listen, I've got a, a session with, uh, the Boston Globe. They want to do four spots and, uh, they asked for you. Can you come in? I said, yeah, yeah, I can come in. <laughs> and I went in, and uh, I, they uh, it's, before I even got in the in the booth, they said, "Where have you been? We we've been looking for you. We 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 had this campaign planned around you, and we couldn't find you. Somebody said you were out west. Where are you?" And I said, "Yeah, I was in Denver." And so I, they said, "Well, listen, we've got these spots for the Globe, and and oh, there's uh, there's another thing that we want you to do uh, next week. Uh, it's like five spots for so and so, and and uh, can you?" Are you going to be able to come in next? Well, never mind. We'll talk about that later. Get get in the booth. Do these four, four spots of the globe. And I and I and I went into the booth and I did the four spots. And and fortunately, I didn't screw them up. And uh, so they I came out and they said, okay, so about next week. And from from that moment on, that was 1980, 1980, April of 1980, something like that. I I. I stopped looking for work because people just called and it was like, you're in the club and, I, and it really felt like a club at that point. It was, uh, you're in or you're out. And, um, uh, and I was in suddenly after, after eight years, uh, I was in. No, it wasn't like an overnight success thing. <laughs> well, it, it was an overnight success thing after eight years. Yeah, after eight years, right? That's how it works with bands, right? They they try and try, and then all of a sudden, here they are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm always fascinated by the fact that the really great voice actors, the ones who are really top drawer, especially when it comes to narrating audiobooks, are classically trained actors. Uh, you know, I've, we've, we've had Scott Brick and, uh, and Simon Vance on the show and several others. Guys. Yeah, they're, 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 I mean, they got great voices, but they're amazing storytellers. And, uh, but they're also classically trained, Shakespearean, Phil Proctor as well has been on our show and same way. Uh, 
what what really is involved in learning how to act that way? Because I think some people tend to forget if they're voice actors that yeah. that's what they're doing. They're it's acting, and I think a lot of people think, no, I just have to have a good sounding voice. Not so. What is it that you well, that you you think you can you really learn by getting that type of training? Um, you know, I, I studied for four years at, at BU uh, in the in the theater program there. Um, but quite quite honestly, I'm 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 still learning how to do Shakespeare. Uh, it's uh, it's it's it it doesn't stop. Um, I, I don't think I was particularly adept uh, at. 24, 22, 3, 4, when I came out of uh, college. Um, um, and, and, and for a long time after that. So uh, it's, it's, it's training and it's, uh, and it's, and it's practice and it's, uh, it's growing up <laughs> too. For me, it was, uh, and learning about who, who I was and really what my responsibility to being an actor uh, was about. Um, and that took uh, kind of, I'm, I'm ashamed to say, it took a long time for me. Um, uh, and, I'm, and I'm still working on parts of that, that, uh, um, uh, you know, the, the, the things that you, you deal with as a, as a human being, uh, as, and, somebody with uh, uh you know with ego and uh, self-regard uh that uh, you, you really have to get under control in order to be really good at it and you know as i say i'm i'm still i'm still struggling with that still working on that well you still do a lot of live theater though right well i used to prior to uh you know what um <laughs> uh then now there's no theater anywhere in the world oh, uh, I, I, uh, theater on zoom really it just <laughs> doesn't interest me i'm sorry i'm sorry it's a nice try i appreciate it um but uh i'm not really interested in in, in watching it it's not theater it's 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 some other thing and uh you know it's not it, do, it doesn't work for me doesn't work for me. Yeah, uh, I, I recently tried to put together a, a reading of a new play uh, for a friend of mine, and uh, finally concluded that by the time we'd put all of this work and effort into making it happen, nobody was going to want to watch it. Because so it just, defeats the purpose you know, there. Well, why don't you just wait until we can get people in a room together? And and do what we're supposed to do with it. I mean, that's uh, you know. Hey, there's there's an entire. The point of it now nobody's producing anything now. So anyway, so it's not like yeah. got to get this up on us up on its feet. Yeah, just wait. Yeah, there was a whole network, a whole new distribution model called Quibi that went down. I mean, the amount of money that went into that platform uh, right. it was it was a serious amount of money went into that platform. It's amazing, George. It, it, the the what. What you actually can't do with all that money. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Good point. Well, speaking of, you know, you know, the, you know, the money line here, I want to talk about frontline for a little bit, because I think, you know, those of us that really like to watch PBS and you know get our news from there, because it's just in-depth reporting and stuff. How did you get that particular gig? I mean, I, I, I imagine it helped being in Boston. For starters, is that is that uh, yeah, that, that, was, that, that was certainly a, a, a helpful factor. Um, I had done uh, actually a funny story. Uh, I was I had a, a poker night, uh, Friday night poker night with uh, with a friend of mine, Bill Anderson, who was a, a editor. Actually, there are a couple of Bill Andersons, but uh, this was this is my friend, Bill Anderson. And he worked for PBS, and uh, he was he was uh, he was editing a, a Nova called Cobalt Blues, and it was about the world supply of cobalt. And, um, and he said, uh, "Listen, uh, come on over." I'm the, actually the the 
the director of the, of the program is going to be with us that Friday night. I want you guys to meet. And so I went and played poker with uh, with uh, um, with Bill and Ted. And uh, Ted asked me to narrate the the Nova. And uh, I think that was one of the first things I did for PBS was this Nova program. And after that, I did a few more, and then I did uh, I did several episodes of Eric Severide's Enterprise, um, and uh, then that went away. And then I entered this competition to to uh, narrate something called Vietnam: A Television History, and uh, and uh, I I remember the only thing I remember about about it was that I was in contention with Richard Kiley. And I said, oh, well, forget that. That's not going to happen. And, uh, and I got the job. And we did 13 episodes of that. And it won all kinds of Columbia Peabody's and, and uh, um, everything else under the sun. And uh, when that was over, I got a call from David Fanning, <clears throat> who was in his second year of, of Frontline and said we were looking for, because first year Frontline, all of the episodes were, were narrated by the producers and um, <clears throat> the journalists. And he decided he wanted a signature voice for the, for the series. And so he, uh, he called me and said, would you do it? <laughs> I said, well, I don't know. I said, yeah. Of course I said, yes, absolutely thrilled. And, uh, um, so that, that's really how that happened. It's just uh, kind of one one step after the other. Yeah. If you're just joining us, our guest is Will Lyman, the iconic voice of Frontline on PBS and a lot of other stuff. You know, it's you, you have this voice that is instantly recognizable, which I think is really really important. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it it just shows that I I guess that you've made it. It's job uh, security, is what that yeah, is. Exactly. <laughs> You know, don't need much of a resume. Just talk. Oh, you're that guy. My, yeah, that guy. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> He's guess, the uh, guy. You know, uh, uh, my my wife always says, "Why aren't you in the upfront credits for Frontline? You should be. Up, it should be Frontline with Will Lyman." I Damn said. straight. So no, yeah. no, no, I don't do the kind of work that's involved in that. Uh, <laughs> my job is very specific, and and uh, you know. Uh, Put me at the tail credits, and and that's that's good because, really, uh, people don't know Will Lyman. They know that guy, that that guy, that guy from right. you know that show. That's that's <laughs> that's what my voice means to them. It's not Will Lyman. It's that that guy, that guy. Yeah, uh, you well, said it. Yeah, well, you've been one of my voiceover heroes for a long time, and that's. Well, you know, Considering what a narrow genre that is, take that as high praise indeed. <laughs> I do. Uh, um, so what what is what goes into the production of that show? I mean, it's it's hard hitting journalism. A lot of work, a lot of work. Not necessarily on my on on my part, but uh, a lot of work. I'm I'm narrating a show uh, that goes on uh, goes on uh, Tuesday, the nineteenth. No. Right. Today's, today? today's the 18th. Today's, today's the 19th. No, I, no. Next Sunday, next Sunday, I'm narrating a show that goes on the air the following Tuesday, and uh, that's uh, that's that's cutting it pretty close. Um, uh, Jim Sullivan's our, our mixer extraordinaire has got his work cut out for him to get that <laughs> to get that out and on the air. Um, usually, it's a, a a bigger stretch between my finishing up. Mike Kirk always says, when, he says, I'm always glad when I see you because it means my job is almost done. Because, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, by the time they get to putting a voiceover on it, you know, everything's pretty much done. Yeah. Well, what's uh, the, what's the, 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 the direction on, on that voice? I mean, I mean, you, you get it that it's like, you know, you're not trying to put on a voice. You're just being you. But it it you've got this seriousness to the 
to these, you know, to the the subject matter that just seems to to grip you. Uh, what's the direction that you get to to achieve that, or what are you, what goes on in your mind to to try and achieve that? Well, for instance, with Mike, uh, who's who's one of the most frequent producers there, it's just phenomenal the the work that he puts out. One, um, I first started working with Mike back when we were doing the. Uh, uh, the films of a uh, decade of destruction about the Amazon rainforest back in, I don't know, when was that? 90, 91, 92, something like that. Um, you know, now we'll, we'll go in and we'll, we'll, you know, and I'll watch some, sometimes the whole scratch of the show, sometimes just uh, five, 10 minutes of it. Get the idea, get the feeling, get the, the, the milieu, the atmosphere, and I uh, will say, so what are, what are we doing this week? You know, uh, and a lot of it is just, he said, just you're just you telling the story. Um, uh, a lot of times is like, it's the, with an attitude of, of, you know, this, right? You, you know, what happened, you've seen this before. I'm just putting it in perspective for you and putting it in a, in a, in a sequence so that you understand this affected this and this affected this, but you know this, you know this information already. Um, sometimes it's a, sometimes it's a little mystery story. Like uh, I always remember the, 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 the episode called the man who knew about uh, the man who, who uh, tried to warn the FBI about the, uh, about nine 11 and uh, was basically dismissed from the FBI for being a pain in the ass and became uh, became the security manager for the Twin Towers. Right. Um, uh, that was I does not seem to be there. <laughs> I got little circles going around. Um, no, you're back. You're good. Yeah. And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> technology we love it yeah yeah uh so all right so it, it, clearly i mean it, they found the right voice for this because it, it it always seems to work just right when you know well, they haven't uh, fired me yet so i guess they're happy. it's always it's always a good thing they couldn't yeah. replace you it couldn't be done it would not be the same show as far as i'm concerned huh. now the other thing you're known for and i think probably far more people know this because Let's face it, not everybody watches PBS. Because it's beer. That's right. Because <laughs> it's beer. Everybody drinks beer. <laughs> right. And 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 not and not not a not a brand of beer that was like really well known. So this was, you know, a a a, a real breakout campaign for them. But well, you were the voice behind the uh the most interesting man in the world commercials, which I thought were just incredibly brilliant. You know, anytime they would come on, you're just like, all right. What's, what are they going to do with this guy this time? Yeah, yeah. And uh, how'd you get how'd you get that particular gig? I just read for it. They sent it to me, and I read for it. And uh, um, actually, the audition was, I think there were three pages of those one-liners. And I just read them, read them off one after the other. And, and, uh, and they hired me. <laughs> <laughs> You've you've got about about five hundred people out there listening to this now going, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But you, it was I, I, it's because I'm so brilliant and so great, Dan. Well, there, you, there you go. There you go. Well, it was I think the the deadpan nature of it just just so so hit it so good. And, yeah, uh, yeah. It was it was really clever. It was it's a great 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 campaign. Yeah, uh, and I imagine. And fun to work with, you know, fun to work on, you know, I mean, but there, there, there wasn't even like a, a, a hint of a smile in your voice with it. It was just straight down like, yeah. like it was yeah. an actual yeah. documentary, which is, I guess, what he is and this is why you care about him. Yeah. Yeah. I've got it. Yeah. I've got it ready to play. Can I play just a little tiny Go bit of it? Sure. Just the audio. The police often question him just because they find him interesting. His beard alone has experienced more than a lesser man's entire body. 
His blood smells like cologne. He is the most interesting man in the world. <laughs> the writing is freaking well, brilliant, of course. One, we, I was in New Orleans uh, uh, one uh, Halloween, and, uh, and and who are you going to go as? I said, I don't know. So I decided to go as the most insufferable man in the world. <laughs> <laughs> All I did was change it to first person. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> My blood smells like cologne. It said that Evil Knievel has a picture of me in his bedroom. <laughs> like, the writing room must have been just great. Just because <laughs> yeah. they're all just short, short little bites. Yeah, yeah. And so you just come up with the most absurd stuff and just see yeah. what sticks. I mean, what was the agency with that? Um, uh, now you ask me, of course, never worked for them again. Oh, right. um, but the checks cleared and that's really all that matters. Yeah, well, they, they used to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, well, what, what was their name for heaven's sake? Well, now Is it three letters or four letters. That's why you're not working for us again. You can't even remember who we were. <laughs> I I think that would say more names, about them. Names don't stick with me anyway. Yeah. Once again, we're talking with Will Lyman. If you have a question for Will Lyman, put it in the Facebook chat room, and Jeff Holman is hiding back there somewhere, taking down all these questions, and will be relaying them to us. And we will relay them to Will, and Will will answer them, whether he answers them honestly or not. That's cool. Well, that's a good. That's a good caveat. Yeah. 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 Um, do you have a home studio? I have a booth, Dan. I have a booth. It's about this big. <laughs> Fits your head in there. About <laughs> it. <laughs> no, it, it has a door and it has a chair and it's a, but it's a it's a it's a converted closet basically. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't want to walk too far uh, to get to it. So I, I had a closet in my office and uh, I said, I can make a booth out of that. So we did. It was very small. And I kind of I sit hunched over like this to read. <laughs> the only place it sounds good is right in this corner. Right. I love letting people hear that on the show. We have amazing talent on our show all the time. And there's, I think people are shocked half the time when... <laughs> Some of them tell you, yeah, I'm in my closet in my boxer shorts. <laughs> yeah. I have a picture of me. I was, uh, uh, my wife and I were vacationing in, in France, and uh, I had, you know, I don't remember whether it was Frontline or, or Dos Equis or whoever it was that called and needed something right away. And I have a picture of me with my, with my headphones, my Harlan Hogan headphones, by the way. Oh yeah, Harlan. And my and my uh, blue yeti in this the closet of this house that I was rented in, uh, renting uh, with the guy's uh, wetsuits, his neoprene wetsuits hanging all over the place. It, was Not bad. <laughs> it worked very well. Pretty good acoustic. Did it work okay? Uh, yeah, yeah. Nobody <laughs> knew. <laughs> Nobody knew where I was. That's great. Yeah, well, as we like to tell people, nobody needs to see how the sausage is made. That's as right. long as they hear it, and it sounds good. How yeah. do you, um, how now you're working from home ostensibly for everything, how are they doing? Are they just giving you a script and you read it wild and you just send in files, or are they remote recording you? Mostly, how do they do uh, it? mostly I just do the short stuff from home. Uh, the promos, um, you know, there's a couple of, you know, industrial things that I do every now and then. Uh, I used to do a ton of that stuff and not so much anymore. Uh, I don't know whether it's because they don't hire me or because they're not doing them. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, and the occasional, I don't think, I'm trying to think if I've done, oh, yeah, I have done uh, some advertising from the booth. Um, most people want to go somewhere, though. Um, of course, I haven't had there hasn't been much business in the last 10 months, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so you haven't had to do so, much commercial work from your, your home closet setup. I have done some. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I think uh, probably TurboTax was the last thing I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, 
the, the front line the, to, to do a full narration, I go over to GBH to do it still. It's, I mean, there's nobody in a building. There's me and a, and a janitor and a guy at the front desk and, uh, yeah. and the engineer. And we're it's in crew. And uh, the producers are on Zoom. So, yeah. Uh, that, that's a much more comfortable setup to do an hour's session. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a whole new world out there. Once again, we're talking with Will Lyman here on uh, VoiceOver Body Shop. If you got a question for him, throw it in the Facebook chat room and we will get that question to him. But right now we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back with Will right after those. Stay tuned. Yep, this is VOBS. Proven anybody can have a show these days. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, Okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the VoiceOver Body Shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. Hey there, hero. David H. Lawrence, the 17th here. Are you enjoying Will Lyman as much as I am? Will and I work together on a project, actually, uh, called League of Denial. He narrated, of course, the PBS Frontline episode. I narrated the audio book, and it was about the NFL's concussion crisis. Um, you hear a lot about audiobooks that it's an awful lot of work and not a lot of money. And when I hear that, I think to myself, man, I wish I could help that person understand that, yeah, not everybody makes a ton of dough in audiobooks, but you won't do yourself any favors if you just try things out, see what sticks, and you don't get proper training and put in a good system, a good production flow. I teach a course called the ACX Masterclass, and we're about to launch our winter 2021 series. We've got a series of three free videos about this very thing, how much opportunity there is and sometimes how little money there is in return and how to fix that. Go to acxmasterclass.com. That's acxmasterclass.com. Watch the videos. We'll open up registration for the ACX Masterclass real soon. uh, And we'll give you a discount as well for watching VOBS. acxmasterclass.com. Thanks. Hey, you and I know that recording from home can be noisy. You need to hear that noise and do all you can to minimize it. So here are the Harlan Hogan Voice Optimized Headphones version 2.0 to the rescue. Good headphones for voiceover playback need to be truth tellers, giving you exactly what you recorded, not colored or too bassy. The H2 voice optimized headphones have incredibly flat response and give you that truth. Other great features include the replaceable plug in cord and the oh so soft Nappa leather ear cups. By the way, VoiceOver Essentials has replacement cords and ear cups both in stock and both ship free in the US. Make sure you know exactly what you and your recording space sound like. The Harlan Hogan Voice Optimized Headphones. Get them only from voiceoveressentials.com. I use them, and so should you. Voiceoveressentials.com. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. And we're back. Here on VoiceOver Body Shop, we're talking with Will Lyman, joining us from Boston Ma, as they used to say on Car Talk. Um... And uh, we, we were talking about um, your home studio and uh, the equipment you use. We didn't quite get there. What microphone do you use, or does it really matter? <laughs> I, it, well, it only matters uh, in the sense that uh, Frontline really uh, requires the Neumann. So mm-hmm. I have a, a TLM. Uh, one of, what is it? 103, probably 102, 103. What is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, they have both. Yeah, the 102 is a little one, and the 102 or three is a bigger one. 
one. I guess it's the 103. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but it, it, uh, it for for voice work, it absolutely rec uh, you know uh, replicates the the studio model. Uh, so it, it's great for me. Um, but no, I've used I. Uh, I've used a, a blue Yeti in the back of my Toyota. Uh, <laughs> You're not alone. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so no, the microphone for the most part does not matter. I've even used the blue Yeti for, for frontline and they don't, they don't say, who are you using? <laughs> yeah, as long as you use it right and put it in a dead space, it, it works. Yeah. It's not all that bad. Yeah, you get it. You get it positioned right. You get enough cushions in the car. <laughs> it's like. It works. It works. Uh, I I record directly in. Uh, well, not directly. I go through a, a an Onyx. Was it uh, uh, the blackjack or something like that? Uh, Is it called a blackjack? No, it's it's actually a, a little eight track mix board. Oh yeah, and um, I, Onyx mixer. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, very I, I I use like you know. 12% of its, of its capacity, I'm sure. Um, and that goes into uh, uh, an ancient iMac. Mm -hmm. And I use Audacity. There you um, go. There you go, kids. That's all you need. Top guy in the biz, and he's using Audacity. Because it's mm -hmm. a free. And free. Free and works. <laughs> <laughs> Which is important to many voice actors who are, yeah. Big, yeah. Who are living on well, Mac. I used, I used to use the... the um, Oh my gosh! Well, the not Pro Tools. Yeah, Pro Tools was one of their one of their interfaces. Yeah, drove me absolutely bonkers. <laughs> I mean, you know, with what? No, you don't have the right thing for this. And I, no, you have to get this. And that, that's a subscription that'll cost you. And it's like every month, my stuff. Oh, it's just so I. I forgot that I got I got a, a different interface and. Used Audacity. I have uh, I have uh, Source Connect, and I'm good to go. Yeah, so all and the I use, and I use I, for a phone patch. I use Skype. I run Skype through the board. It's a phone patch. Ah, you see now, everybody. He's explaining to you that this is reality, and it's not so much the gear; it's how you use it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, we got a few questions here from our vast audience. Uh, first, first one is from uh, Jim McNicholas. You want to get that, George? Sure. Uh, Jim asks, um, your breakout role as narrator of Vietnam, a television history. How did you get your big break? Uh, well, Jim, uh, 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 being around uh, the right people, uh, being in the right place at the right time, uh, having having done, uh, having been prepared when when the situation arose. Mm. Uh, before before I did that, I had been doing. Uh, I, I made my living off of uh, industrial narrations, you know. Uh, uh, talking about how cinder blocks are made, uh, talking about how the optical weft reader on the, the mechanical looms were, you know, operated and uh, making sense of all this stuff, uh, trying to make it uh, uh, even even medical stuff that uh, I didn't have the first clue as to what it was, but basically reading syntax. Uh, and if there was something that I didn't understand, uh, you say, does this mean this or does it mean this? Um, uh, and then, and then making that distinction in the read. Uh, I've been doing that for years before before I hit it off with PBS. Uh, so um, you you learn how to do it. You learn how to make sense out of something. Uh, you learn how to you learn how to put a real person in front of you, and uh, and speak to that person. Um, I did a, 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 a show on the O-Star race, the Observer Single-Handed Transatlantic Race, um, which this guy had, he mounted uh, eight millimeter cameras on the transoms of uh, these 
one these single-handed vessels that were racing across the Atlantic from uh, England to, to the U.S. And he gave each of them, uh, uh, you know, cassettes that they'd slap into them, uh, probably, I don't know, eight millimeters. They're probably like 12-minute cassettes or something like that. Um, and, uh, and also uh, handheld cameras uh, so that they could, you know, shoot panoramic or they could shoot, turn it around, shoot themselves or walk up the transom, hit the button and, you know, talk to the camera. Uh, uh, it was quite a harrowing film, actually, a uh, remarkable film. Uh, but when I was recording it, and I just come from all these industrial reads and so on and so forth, he says, ah, yeah, what, I, what, I, what I really want to hear is somebody that's just sitting on the couch next to me and telling me the things that I need to know in order to understand what's on, on the screen. Just giving me whatever background I need to say this is what. So you're sitting on the couch next to somebody and saying, this is what's going on here. And this is this is what's happening. And he he didn't know that, blah, blah, blah. You know, and uh, it was a very, very personal approach that taught me a great deal. Um, Good direction. Uh, Not always. You don't always get that. Good direction, no, yeah, really. No. But when you, don't you do, have much direction at all, quite frankly. Uh, producers don't know how to direct. Sorry, mm -hmm. <laughs> Shh, we won't tell anybody. Yeah. Um, and the yeah. other person I learned a lot from was Bud Greenspan, who, uh, who was the uh, famous uh, Olympic filmmaker. Right, right. Uh, who who taught me how to level it out. Uh, you don't always want to do that, but it was the style of his film. And it was a style I learned from him, uh, which is is still very useful. You, you don't need a lot of excitement in your work. Uh, it doesn't dive up and down. Yeah, and, no, no, it's just like level it right out. Just say the word. Tell you like it is, and you know, and it's and and it turns out to be remarkably emotional uh, because not because I'm emotional, but because the fact that I don't offer you any emotion it frees the viewer to do whatever is happening to yeah. him. And uh, I, that was, that was a big lesson to learn as well. Yeah. I, I once read that, that Peter Coyote doesn't pre-read his copy, which to me was like, no, <laughs> how could he possibly do that? I'm going to assume that you probably pre-read your copy before you do this stuff. Even though as, as you were saying, you've got a, a tight turnaround with something on frontline or something like that. Um, I, let's see, uh, I don't always read every, the, the entire script. Um, very often I will, I will listen to the scratch track. Um, but we have enough, I work fast enough and we have enough time allotted in the studio for me to, to be able to read. I'm a, I'm a good reader. I read ahead as I read. Um, when I'm speaking these words, I'm looking at the next ones. Uh, so I know, I don't know. I just have a innate sense of how the sentence is going. And if I, and if yeah. I, if I read it wrong, if I say, Oh, that didn't go where I thought it was going to go. I just stop and do it again. It's no big deal. Right. Um, and another thing that I, I might, just offer to anybody who's interested. Uh, if you if you make a mistake in the studio, don't apologize and don't say, "Oh, I'm sorry." Can we? Uh, can I do that again? Uh, so they have to re, re slate and do the whole thing. It's just just do it. Just stop. Take a breath. Go on. Do it again. Fix it. I uh, don't waste people's time with like, oh, I'm sorry. I, no, I didn't get that. I always do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> just just do the job. Just read it. Just just go back and do it right. <clears throat> but anyway, that's that's what we can do there. And it doesn't doesn't take any time. Uh, if I didn't get it right the first time, just do it again. Big right. deal. Yeah. I mean, most of the time, if I'm reading it, it's like, well, that's not right. 
just stop and you just keep going. I mean, yeah. I, I never hit stop. It's just like, you just edit it out. Don't worry about it. Stop button. I didn't say. That's <laughs> right. Uh, question from JV Martin. Uh, when you started out in narration, who were your inspirations? Um, when I was a, when I was a kid, uh, I had a, a subscription to the Columbia record, uh, children's record club of the month or something like that. And, uh, there was a, uh, guy now, once again, name, as soon as I start thinking about it, it disappeared. <laughs> Norman, <clears throat> Norman, Norman, oh, that's terrible. Wonderful, wonderful narrator. Uh, was was the man on most of these records, and uh, I just loved his voice. I loved his storytelling. I loved to uh, loved to listen to him, and I actually met him at a commercial audition. You know, like twenty five years later, <laughs> he still sounded exactly the same. It was great. Um, there, so there was that, and uh, um, I didn't really have anybody that I was trying to sound like I didn't I didn't really know quite frankly uh, I wasn't I wasn't a follower of of, uh, uh, of voiceover people uh, didn't really know much about the game at all um, there were a lot of people that helped me uh, I mentioned Jay Rose or right, maybe that was before we started but uh, uh, Jay Rose a sound brilliant brilliant sound engineer no longer with us unfortunately um, who really kind of helped me figure out how to how to do a radio spot how to you know what was important about what the 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 flow of it the 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 different parts of it the intro the 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 meat and the cell and uh, 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 and really helped me through a, a pretty pretty raw time uh, as a as a young voiceover guy uh, very patient with me uh, so there were there were people that helped me um, but i i didn't have a i didn't have a i didn't have an idol i didn't have a voiceover idol hmm see i had you uh, <laughs> no, you I, didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no I, I i think our careers probably paralleled each other a whole lot uh, I used to be a booth announcer at the PBS station in Buffalo. So, oh yeah, I you know, oh, I knew listen that uh, one of you, the your advertiser there who was who was talking about uh, audio books. Yeah, talking about denial. Yeah. Which was, uh, he did the audio book for it. I guess I didn't even yeah. know there was an audio book for it. Um, but we did that on Frontline. We did uh, League of Denial on Frontline. It made me uh, made me swear off football. Actually, <laughs> true. I haven't watched football since. Really, really. Oh, exciting playoffs this week, especially with the I Bills. Big there. games, big games. I, I've been tempted, but uh, I just, uh, you know, I I fell out of love with the NFL after that. Yeah, that'll do it. it is, this is an insupportable organization, and they're not honest. They're not. They're stonewalling. They're, you know, yeah. So, was that uh, the, was that Norman you were referring to from the Columbia Record? Was that was that Norman Rose? Yes, yes. Thank you. And he, I, I don't know that. I thought of that when I said Jay Rose. Yeah. Norman Rose. Yes. Good <laughs> one. Good one, George. I like to fill in the gaps when I can. <laughs> um, thank you. Hey, I'm, 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 I'm. I have the same gene. I have my dad's gene of name drop, name law. Not try, dropping names in the right way. Dropping names out the back of your head. <laughs> that way. <laughs> I have that. I have that. Um, JV, uh, by the way, also a great voice actor himself and narrator too. He has a couple questions. I can see why. Um, regarding Frontline, are you a constant consumer of national news so that you'll know the story before you even need to tell it? <laughs> oh, wow. Uh Hey JV, uh, I, I yet yeah, lately I've been uh, I've been sitting at the breakfast table for a good two hours with uh, the Times and the and the, the Boston Globe, and then I come upstairs and read the Washington Post um, on the online. Uh, not cover to cover, I must say, I'm not that fast a reader, but uh, uh, 
it's been it's been pretty intense lately i have to say uh normally not so much i used to i used to come down and pick up the sports pages that was the first thing i'd read and then maybe i'd read a little news now i i didn't even look at the sports pages it's like front page of both papers first and then go inside that's uh yeah, it's a little exhausting and a little stressful. I, I, I keep saying I got to stop doing that, but uh, we're all doing it. Yeah, I yeah. Know. I know. <laughs> in bed, but it's now it's in bed with an iPhone. You know, reading yeah, the news. Really. <laughs> I try not to do that. I don't do that. I don't take my. I don't take. I leave my iPhone in the bathroom. <laughs> it's a good idea. It's a good idea. Yeah, <laughs> a good idea. Yeah, no, Just really. You clean it off. Uh, <laughs> Can we get somebody, somebody gave me one of those little uh, uh, UV like cases that you put it in? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so somebody gave me one of those too for my birthday. Yeah, I won't get Rona from it, you know. Yeah, it cleans the Rona and charges it at the same time or something. <laughs> yeah, another one from JV Roll. Last, last uh, one he has when the day comes, you decide to hang them up. Uh, is there a voice acting genre that you will miss the most? Um, if, yeah, it would be frontline. That would be working with that team. Um, they're, they're just such great people to work with and, and so brilliant at what they do. Um, uh, and it's, it's such a sense of fulfillment, uh, to know, you know, there were, there were years when maybe I hadn't done anything, you know, I hadn't done a theater piece or I hadn't done anything that I thought was worthwhile and yet I had done a year's worth of frontline another season of frontline and that made me feel good and uh, uh, and I, I don't have any plans to hang up on frontline uh, you know I'll wait for frontline to hang up on me but uh, <laughs> uh, no I uh, yeah, why, just, why stop why stop I enjoy what I'm doing absolutely absolutely so same to you JV Keep it up. Yeah. Uh, well, it has been a pleasure to have you on the show. Oh, I've been, been I, I said, I've been looking forward to this for 10 years. <laughs> now my life is complete. Wait, man, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, as someone who really appreciates good voiceover, somebody who, you know, you know, and I listen and I know the voices and I know the names. Yeah. I'm like, you know who that person, you know who that person is. But Will Lyman's always one of the ones that's always at the top of my head. So I really appreciate you you joining us and imparting some wisdom on us and telling us your story. And keep doing what you're doing, man. Well, thank you. I appreciate your kind words, and uh, I will do my best. Thank All you. Right. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Will. All right. All righty. Will Lyman, everybody. All right. We'll be right back to wrap things up right after this. You're watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, VoiceActorWebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Well, we already did the commercial for Source Connect. That was when Will Lyman says, I have Source Connect in my studio. So, obviously, <laughs> it's the tool to have. Um, yeah, Source Connect is a, a product made by Source Elements, who's one, one of our long-running sponsors. And it's uh boy it's become this tool that's just synonymous with having a professional voiceover studio in your home it's really that to that point now it's uh it's a tool that's used by the vast majority of the top shelf producers out there 
They love it because it's immediate. Um, the audio quality they receive over Source Connect is production quality. They can immediately count on it and use it. And we've even started doing some production for another show I'm on using Source Connect Pro, where uh, and the producer loves it because he can actually record all of us his talent all separately onto separate ISO tracks in his system in Pro Tools. So that cuts on cuts down on his production time too. Um, all the other most many of the other technologies out there don't have that ability to have recorded ISO tracks. Some do, some don't. But that's something that Source Connect can do, and that's just why it's been around for so long. And uh, one thing, thing to keep in mind too is when you get Source Connect, you get you do get support. Now you can do a subscription and continuously get support, which I highly recommend. Or you can buy it on a yearly. There's a couple of ways to get support, but you get support when you need it, and it's really a key thing when you're doing this kind of work from home. So check it out. Get signed up. Head over to source-elements.com and get a trial, get familiar with it, and be ready for when that agent or whoever says you need to have Source Connect, you can say, no worries, I got it, I got it covered, I got it ready. So uh, thanks again, Source Elements, and uh, we'll be right back to wrap it up. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. And we're back. It's great. Meeting Will Lyman. I've always wanted to do that. And now I have. That was uh, fantastic. Yeah, no, he was great. And some great, some great stories. Um, well, you know, next week on this show, it'll be Tech Talk number 49. 49. And we're going to be approaching 50 as we approach our 10th anniversary of doing voiceover body shop and 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 ewabs so i think one of the things we want if there's a favorite moment of yours now i know i know we have a lot of new viewers uh you know to the show yeah. in the last two years i mean we the audience has tripled because face it we're just that damn good um and extremely modest about it and very modest uh yeah uh yeah and, and what else is there to watch except like i say turkish soap operas uh, but if you, there's a favorite moment you have, write into us at the guys at vobs.tv and uh, say, hey, what about this one? What about that one? There are some great moments. You can imagine if after 10 years of doing this show, we've got some great stuff. But if, if there's something you'd like to see again, we're going to put together a, a compilation of the greatest moments of voiceover body shop over the last 10 years as we prepare for the next 10 years. And, uh, you know, by the time we do 20 years of this, George, than the fact that I'll be well into my seventies, uh, it will be. After twenty years, people will still want to know what's the best mic for voiceover. For voiceover, absolutely, without question. Um, send us in, send those in. But uh, next week we've got Tech Talk number forty-eight, and then the following week, February first, the return of our good friend Debbie Derryberry, the voice right. of Jimmy Neutron, and all sorts of other stuff. And a, a great singer and, uh, you know, and just an all round super person, a great coach. Right size powerhouse. Yeah, she really, yeah, uh, yeah. I think she comes up to about my knee. <laughs> uh, um, who are our donors of the week? Well, we've got those familiar names I've read so many times. Some of them I've even screwed up royally. you got Michael Kearns, Christy Burns, Graham Spicer. Hey, Graham. Uh, Sonia Mobley, Michelle Blanker. Christopher Epperson, Sarah Borges, and Philip Sapir. And uh, those names are familiar because they're all probably subscribers. So when you go to donate, you can click the donate button. Uh, you can choose to just drop a little money in there one time, or you can just subscribe for a very small amount if you want, and we'll just keep reading your name. Yeah. Who knows how someone's going to hear about you and want to hire you. I heard That's your true. name on VO. I don't, I don't know if anybody's actually ever said that that's actually gotten them a gig ever, but you know. It couldn't hurt. It couldn't hurt. It couldn't hurt. Um, let's see. What else? Um, we have a mailing list, by the way. And there I'm sure lots of you watching the show live because you got the notification that we had Will Lyman on tonight. And that, oh, I got to watch that. So you get you get a, an advanced view and a, a very personal message from us that's saying, hey, we want you to watch our show. And email is still a thing, right? I think we're so overwhelmed with notifications and social media is this and that, that sometimes just looking at an email box is the best way to, to be informed. 
And sometimes it's just worth it to see the promos I put together for that. So <laughs> they are entertaining. They, I, I, I work very hard on those. Um, let's see. We need to thank our sponsors because without them, well, we'd just be a sponsorless show and probably would have lasted a year, not 10. Uh, like uh, Harlan Hogan's voiceover essentials. Voiceover extra. Uh, source elements. Voheroes.com. Voice actor websites.com. And JMC demos. Uh, Got to thank Jeff Holman for getting those questions together for us tonight in the chat room. Always thanks to him. Uh, our, our technical director, Sue Merlino, who picked up a new system and it was darn near the weekend. Yeah, over the weekend. <laughs> over the weekend, we switched a whole new system. I know. And it and it works. It's awesome. And it's making things a lot easier, especially for me today, because I'm I'm not exactly sure what day it is. But um thanks to her for 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 getting that done. And Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Well, that's gonna do it for us. We're gonna re-rack it and get ready for tech talk. Stay tuned for that. Make sure you write your questions in because we want to answer your questions. Uh, but really, it's most important to understand that. When it comes to voiceover audio, if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Woodham. And this is voiceover. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. BS.